she out of nowhere messed up my album of the year list. So we have beef. Hey. Little Sims, if you're unfamiliar, 27 year old UK rapper, singer, actress with Yoruba roots. And to be quite honest, I'd heard Sims's name a lot in passing on the internet and in conversation in person and just never took it upon myself to go and seek out her material. Until I started hearing a ton of hype about her latest record, Sometimes I Might Be Introvert. It's everything I'd really want out of a record. Thoughtful writing, gripping narratives, orchestral arrangements, great mixes. It's the kind of album you can't really choose to start in the middle or somewhere ambiguous in the track list and not feel guilty about it. But I didn't want to make a video like reviewing the album or just like going through all of the reasons why I think it's good because A, I'd be here for a very long time and B, I think you'll get that. You'll put it on and you'll be very impressed. I'm confident in that already. I kind of want to just hone in on this one aspect of the record that kind of sold it as my album of the year, and that's framing. In fact, I think the way this record is framed could turn a lot of people onto it, like pretty hard, like me, or just as intensely turn people away from the record. So like I mentioned before, this record has a lot of orchestral arrangements and really dramatic production choices that really sell the cinematic aspects of the narratives being told here. It makes you feel like Sims is a protagonist fighting this massive battle against herself with a lot to lose, but also a lot to gain and learn along the way. To really sell this further, almost like a Disney movie, Sims not only employs the voices of children and children's choirs, but also indulges in these occasional cinematic interludes. These interludes not only help with the album's pacing and kind of give the listener a break from this orchestral wall of sound that they're constantly but pleasantly immersed in for a lot of the time, but they also frame what Sims is saying in a universally relatable way. Hear me out. Sims addresses a lot of themes on this record. Familial troubles, self-doubt, difficulties with being an introvert, growing up in a rough neighborhood, encountering struggles as a black woman, fundamental societal issues, romantic relationship issues, a relationship with her dad, burnout from the music industry and fame, being emotionally drained from friends around her, not being a good enough friend. This album covers a lot in an hour and five minutes. The point is, you don't necessarily have to directly relate to any of it to get something out of what Sims is saying. What I admire is how Sims used these aforementioned interludes and arrangements like we talked about to make her present day struggles seem like part of this bigger childhood narrative. Like something akin to the feeling you get when you finish watching Peter Pan or The Lion King. In effect, these interludes kind of tap into those universally innocent, childlike versions of ourselves that we also carry with us in some capacity, as corny as that sounds. I think it's the contrast of the actual content of Sims' adult struggles with this childlike framing that kind of made me go, wow. I don't even have all of these problems specifically, but just thinking about and applying the same framing to my own life was kind of inspiring and emotional. And it's funny that this is the case for me because I think it's like abundantly clear that Sims wrote this album very much for herself, which artists always should. There's like this fairy godmother-like character that Sims employs to kind of tell her things that she wishes she heard from people around her throughout the album. I think the moment where this is most apparent on the record is Little Q Part 2 going into Gems. In Little Q Part 2, we not only get our first substantial taste of the children's choir, but we hear out some of Sims' childhood struggles. At 14, her dad was nowhere to be found, and her older brother went to jail, kind of making her the de facto man of the house. And her neighborhood was pretty rough and all this combined kind of made her an angry person. She also talks about a brief encounter with death and waking up in a coma. And as I was writing this, I was about to write something where I said, this is a very Kanye-esque moment, like when Kanye talks about getting in a car accident and that like giving him a bigger purpose and appreciation for life. But then I listened back to the track and realized that there's this whole Kanye-esque outro, like something you would find off of College Dropout. It's actually really cool. Anyway, the point is Little Q Part 2 is followed up by this track called Gems, titled kind of in the way of like gems that everyone needs to hear, like little phrases and sayings. In Gems, you get the spatial sense that these children's voices are flying all around you and there's a fairy godmother character up above. The choir says, follow the arrow, Sims. Look for the messages. Follow your intuition. Your heart is full of gems. Find your calling, Sims. Your heart will guide you, Sims. Then the fairy godmother chimes in over these angelic drones and says, take your time. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe. Do you want 15 years or 15 minutes? Do not tire yourself out. Sims then replies that she's trying to live up to these expectations of herself not only in the music industry but also in life and that she's trying to be the greatest version of herself. But oftentimes her past and present problems kind of make her feel stuck in that whole process. The fairy godmother then replies, but understand you're human. Be proud. Your light will shine in the darkest hour 
Pressure makes diamonds. Don't fold. They won't silence you, but they'll try to. So follow your heart. It will guide you. And then the kids start saying these basic truths of life, like one plus one is two, four plus two equals six. And it's almost like grounding and meditative in a way, because it's like, you remember when you were learning those things for real for the first time? Remember being a child? That's still inside of you. Don't be too phased by the intensity and seriousness of all these things on your plate as an adult right now. Just like any Disney protagonist, you can get through this. Follow the arrow all the way to the end. Then Gems ends with the choir saying, physically high, mentally low, you're hurting inside, but nobody knows. And I just don't know why. Well, I actually do know why, because it's great. It's, it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. But the combination of all that stuff made me almost tear up. I got kind of emotional listening to that. I was like, wow, this, I don't know why this is affecting me in the way that it is but it was a great technique. I love the way that it's framed. The rapper that came to tea is an equally theatrical moment where Sims has to confront her introversion in the smallest of spaces. Sure, she's a big, almost A-list rapper that performs in front of crowds of thousands all the time, but as an introvert, sometimes situations as small as a tea party gathering can kind of bug her out. And I love the concept of this interlude too, like why is an introverted rapper coming to a tea party? It seems like a harmless situation, but in fact, it's one that freaks Sims out just as much as some of the other stuff going on in her life. The fairy godmother then gives more gems, if you will, at the end of this track as well, giving you bits like, the bravest of hearts can sometimes be the loneliest of souls, pride comes with pain, so to be proud is a losing game, your mind is the most powerful tool, never look back, your destiny awaits. And then a massive choir fueled by orchestral hits comes in to say, it don't matter where you are, you can still reach for the stars. Again, the effect of hearing Sims talk about things like having a rough childhood, not having a dad or brother to turn to, not being well off, becoming an angry or bitter person, having those things juxtaposed with this higher level interpretation of the struggle that's meant to tap into this childlike, more innocent version of herself, or more generally speaking, the listener, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Then you have The Garden, which comes after a few West African inspired bangers. Some of the notes I had written down about this track included, this sounds like Shrek 2, which is not accurate at all, but you know what I mean, it sounds like a fairy tale. The fairy godmother says, look, you can't keep being this angry person that lets her anger affect other people. It's way better and kinder to let people in. Having patience is a virtue and masking how you feel is kind of a weakness. She also reminds Sims to be humble and be kind to herself. And in interviews, Sims has even talked about what I'm labeling as this whole framing basically saying that she's doing all this to kind of, you know, check in with the little Simbi inside of her and make sure she's okay because she's always gonna be there. That's always inside of you is the point. No matter what you're going through or how deep or dark it is, it's always important to check in with that innocent younger self inside of you. And like I said, when I think about this and apply it to my own life, I kind of, I get emotional. And I don't know if it's because I'm like a sucker for Disney movies or something like that, but for some reason it sticks with me. Yes, this album is immaculately produced and well thought out in every respect but this framing is really the cherry on top for me and what kept me coming back to it. I honestly think what the interludes and their accompanying production and arrangement choices do for the framing of this record sell its value beyond something that's just musically good or musically great rather. <laughs> Well done, Simbi. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know if I just exposed myself as just someone who likes Disney movies and kids movies, or if these like, you know, interludes and stuff hit you in a similar way or not. Let me know below, but either way, that's been it for this one. And I'll see you guys in the next one.